Hi, my name is Paul Harris, and I'm the faculty lead of REDCap here at Vanderbilt. Uh, I'm really excited about being here today, uh, working with the REDCapCon uh, Spanish Consortium, and uh, look forward to sharing and uh, always look forward to learning from, uh, from all of our consortium partners. So I was assigned the topic, why REDCap? And I'm going to try to answer that today through, um, th th through a discussion that, that I had recently, or by sharing some information from a discussion that I had recently with an external advisory board. This group comes in once a year, and they like to hear about progress, and they like to hear a lot about not just the what, what we're doing, but the why we're doing it and the impact that it's having. So I'll share from these slides because I think it fits well with this, uh, th this meeting that we're having and the assignment uh, that I was given. I'm going to start with uh, what's new. And this is going to be a little bit different. I'll, I'll do a what's next, uh, new and what's next. It's a little bit different than the, the material Rob Taylor uh, typically shares, which, which is much more detailed and focused on new features and functions. I'm going to talk about really you know, larger program uh, objectives in, in, the, in the new and the next space. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I always point out the consortium itself is the power behind REDCap. And, and uh, as you can see here, uh, we've got now 6,500 uh, plus partners from 153 different countries and uh, many, many users, many, many liaisons across those, uh, those institutional partners. And, and again, that's the real power behind REDCap. And I'm always uh, careful to make sure that people understand that the ideas and the, the sort of the magic behind uh, the magic behind what we're doing with REDCap every day. Uh, I pointed out in this meeting that eConsent, you know, had been a really big deal over the last two or three years. Uh, you know, as you all know, uh, eConsent took on a, 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 a more of an urgency and more of a focus in the time of the pandemic that we recently experienced. And so, you know, this this has been one of our biggest uh, so what fa factors in the in the red cap world, as you know, I explain it for the impact here at Vanderbilt uh, with our own research studies and sometimes uh, not research studies uh, or uh, operational stu operational work, but also throughout the consortium, we've had uh, just tremendous uptake on e consent, e consent by the numbers. At least when I uh, presented these these numbers. A couple of months ago, we had more than 4 million transactions uh, across the REDCap consortium. Institutions had enabled the e-consent framework. Uh, we had many, uh, more than 50,000 projects across the REDCap consortium. And, and then locally here at Vanderbilt, you know, we had, uh, we counted over 184,000 uh, e-consent transactions stored for our own research uh, operations and, and use. I looked this morning and that number is about 200,000. And I don't know if everything else will scale up at that percentage, but but I do know that, uh, you know, e-consent continues to be a huge asset to us here at Vanderbilt. And I think through the consortium as well. I, I talked about multi-language management. So, so much of our focus over the last uh, several years, both at Vanderbilt uh, across the US and, and I think uh, worldwide, has been uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and, and I talked about the fact that, you know, we see a lot of research studies coming through our shop here at Vanderbilt. And uh, people, uh, people need, sometimes need reminders that, uh, that hey, if you, if you plan on, um, you know, full engagement with, with a partic particular uh, participant population, it's great to think about the, you know, communicating in the language that they actually communicate with each other in every day. So, so this, this work around the multi-language management that actually launched a few years ago, you know, I think is really catching on. It's really uh, helpful uh, and it's, it's really solving a, a big need as, um, as advanced by the larger scientific community. Uh, did a quick look uh, at, you know, how, how are the projects that we're running at Vanderbilt? You know, operating uh, with that multi-language mo module, and uh, you see the the uh, statistics here. Uh, Seventy out of 114 at the time of this counting were using it for research, but but uh, you know, as we see in Redcap a lot, uh, people in uh, people not doing research, you know, doing operational support around research. Uh, these tools, you can see the pie graph over there. Those that use it. 
Uh, most are using it with two language. We have a few using it with three languages as well. Uh, another big thing that I that I pointed out for this group, and I'll point out for this group is uh, today is that uh, you know we've invested a lot into our MyCap platform. Uh, this is a platform that was designed for participants, uh, particularly designed uh, to support uh, participants that are doing longitudinal studies, and and we want to have a relationship with them for some time, uh, and, and help them. Uh, in studies and trials where there's uh, centralized or remote uh, data capture directly from participants. We, we've put in, um, uh, rec most recently, we have, uh, you know, converted what used to be an external module that supported MyCap to, to the base REDCap code, which should make it much, much easier to, to adopt and to support uh, for, in, for our institutional partners and thereby, you know, our researchers across the consortium. We're continuing to develop in uh, in a big way in MyCap. We have a big release coming up uh, uh, shortly, shortly later this summer where we're converting the code base over to Flutter. Uh, and we think that with that, uh, we'll be able to, to more quickly design and release features uh, supporting both uh, iOS and Android dev devices. Um, I pointed out uh, that these, this is a this is a small sampling of use cases, but it's a small sampling of use cases that that we pulled together to publish what we call a marker paper for uh, for the MyCap platform. And I won't I won't bother to read all of these, but but you can see over in the left hand corner, you know we've got uh, projects at Vanderbilt, the University of Washington, Mount Sinai, UC Denver, Univ University of Windsor, and and you know in the middle section. You know, they're using it for all kinds of different uh, different uh, ways. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, I, th I think this is definitely a subset of studies, but it's a pretty good representative set of studies that show the diversity uh, and, and the you know the interesting use cases that can be supported. We'll uh, the last five years uh, connecting REDCap to electronic health records uh, to support direct uh, connectivity of data from the EHR electronic health record to uh, the, the electronic data capture platform that, that is REDCap. In the old days, uh, the figure on the right was how this was done. You'd open an EHR browser, you'd open a REDCap browser, and you'd, uh, you'd look at one and you'd type uh, in, in the case report form in the other. With this new FHIR methodology uh, and appropriate mapping of, uh, of data between the two systems before study launch, we can automate all of that. Um, we've uh, we use that at Vanderbilt. Uh, we, we've uh, again at the time of this presentation a few months ago, we, we were over 200 uh, projects using it for cl uh, both clinical data pull and clinical data mart. Uh, you can you can think about those two project types as uh, prospective studies with case report forms. That's clinical data pool. Clinical data mart is more like a registry. Give me a bunch of medical record numbers and tell me what data you want me to get and, and when. Uh, you can see across those two types of projects, we're, we're supporting about 200 or more now, uh, and you can see some of the some of the statistics on the the data that have been pulled. Uh, data elements that have pulled from the EHR to the EDC system. We recently did a um, uh, study. Uh, Alex Chang, one of our uh, faculty members here, did a study looking at um, the effectiveness of using that technique versus the traditional hand entered uh, coding for a, for a study that we we supported here at Vanderbilt called Active for Host Tissue. Uh, uh, you can see the reference to the paper at the bottom, but the but the bottom line is we 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 found that we had good good mapping, uh, you know, between the types of data that were needed for the case report forms and the types of data that we can we could pull uh, on a regular basis from the EHR. Uh, when those uh, data elements mapped, we had really really good uh, concordance between the um, the the values that were pulled and those that were adjudicated by humans. Uh, and, and we saw, uh, actually, we saw greater accuracy in the EHR system than we saw uh, transfer system than we saw with human entered values, which you would expect. Uh, and we also saw a significant time saving. So we really think that, uh, that you know, this, this is a good single center proof of concept. We're looking forward next to, uh, to looking at this with multi-site studies. 
Uh, just a few, uh, one other slide on this, um, since we're building it using fire, it works well in Epic, it works well in Cerner, and we think it works well in other uh, EHR vendors, but, but these are the ones that are most common in the, in the uptake so far. So, so I'm going to switch now just for another minute or two and talk about what's next. And again, I'm not talking, there's no promises here. Uh, I can give you, uh, you, you know, you, you should think about it as directional versus prescriptive, uh, and, and my, my little skunk signal over there is a reminder that what, what I'm about to present uh, is, is what, it, what I usually call within my team skunk works. These are things that we're working on. It may work, it may not work. Directionally, we think it's the right thing to do, and if, if tactically or, uh, uh, you know, technically we, we run into snags, we may change directions a little bit, but, but directionally, this, these are some of the things that uh, that I think are going to be really important coming up uh, next and things that we're, we're already working towards. I mentioned uh, the MyCap platform a few moments ago. This is a, this is a graphic that we created uh, when, when we were thinking a while back about the, the different ways that one might use a REDCap project, depending on the circumstances of the project and how, how, the, how that might be different if you have a study that needs uh, SMS messages in Twilio, for instance, or, or we want a native app that sits with the participant for a long time, that's uh, for, for a, a long duration of time with many touch points, that's my cap. And, and of course, the traditional internet browser on the computer or mobile device, and, uh, and, and it, as well as the RedCap mobile app, which is uh, designed primarily for data capture, it's going out into... Um, uh, remote communities. So we're spending a lot more time on, you know, trying to get this right, trying to look at the whole landscape and sort of figure out the, the best ways to support the, you know, the, the, the right way to support the right study at the right time. Uh, and again, one of the, one of the things that we're really doubling down and focusing on over the next uh, year or so, I think will be that MyCap platform. <clears throat> Um, this is this is a fairly busy slide, and I won't spend a lot of time with it. But uh, but this is something that we have uh, been organizing with the uh, RedCap uh, validation uh, uh, working group within RedCap, uh, and uh, our, our idea here is that we want to do more around uh, rapid validation of coding. Sorry, rapid validation of the technology stack for. Uh, uh, various reasons, including 21 CFR Part 11 uh, com compliance for uh, trials that that, uh, that may need to collect data in a way that's proper and appropriate for uh, uh, submission to FDA. So again, it's a fairly busy slide. There's a number of different components in it, uh, but, but we're working hard as a consortium. Uh, we're working hard as our, our Vanderbilt team is doing a lot of project management as well around this. And we think, uh, we're, well, we know our, our goal is we're looking to, um, to to maybe take the the notion that every time an LTS version of REDCap is released, we'd like to have uh, core functional requirements and testing and validation, uh, maybe even validation scripts that are automated to be able to very quickly validate um, the new instance of REDCap that's going on to a server that that needs this type of um, you know support and validation. We're going to try to try to get that cycle down to at least a month. Uh, we think we may be able to go quicker if we can get the uh, automated script working well. But but you know from what I've seen, uh, even even getting it down to a month uh, of of release and being able to sort of certify. That, that the instance of REDCap that we make available for the, for the validation committee is, is up and running and tested and validated you know, within that four week time period. That'll be a significant um, win. Uh, and, and I think not only Vanderbilt, but also you know, other institutions, uh, all institutions that want to, to install in that way will, will benefit. And just a couple more. Um, We've been thinking a lot about uh, one of the problems that we see in recruitment and retention is uh, participant compensation. So we've been thinking about this one for at least 10 years. Uh, we, we've actually got a little, and, and we've spun up different uh, pilots and spun them down again. Uh, I think we're on the right track this time, uh, but but uh, but but uh, yeah, I do again want to caution you that it may or may not happen. That's why I sort of put the the skunk works uh, ahead of the what's next uh, topics here. 
but but you know the idea is you know there there might be a set of settings you know within a case report form or even automated so that uh, you know one once a participant has completed you know a step you know per, like a survey uh, survey rendering or, or perhaps uh, a set of steps like a visit one uh, com compliance then you know we'd like to make it easier to fulfill uh, participant compensation using uh, you know assortment of methods including um, including um, you know gift cards of the choosing of, of the recipient this could um, if, if we do this we, we definitely don't want to sort of build all of the all, all of the machinery for the um, for, for the fulfillment process but but we're, we're exploring and we're testing some uh, integration work with a company called tango and also exploring a uh, little farther downstream uh, with a company called Greenfire. I, I think it makes a lot of sense, particularly as you know, I work with teams around recruitment and retention. This is one of those pain points and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy from the coordinating staff and, and it can be a little bit frustrating for the, for the research participants themselves. So that's an area that we're, we're actively uh, focusing. And then finally, this one's kind of fun. Uh, you know, looking at all of the large language models and, uh, you know, generative uh, AI tools, we're, we're starting to think about, you know, different ways that we might integrate that within uh, with, within REDCap. Uh, I think I sat down a few weeks ago and came up with somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 25 places where a lightweight integration would, would actually work pretty well in terms of helping the uh, helping researchers either set up or conduct studies. This is a simple little example where uh, we, we, we paired uh, REDCap uh, and, and OpenAI, the, the chat GPT tools, to, uh, to provide feedback from a conference meeting. It was the REDCap 2022 uh, conference meeting. Uh, gave, gave it qualitative information from folks that were, were answering the question about you know, what went well or how could we improve that sort of thing. Uh, and, and rather than sort of reading through all of the different feedback uh, items question by question, we just asked ChatGPT to summarize it. So you can see the results here. Uh, you know, I won't uh, I won't belabor the point uh, other than to tell you that you know we we now have an external module where we have this functionality working. We're taking sort of a slow walk approach here because the because of the security uh, issues. Um, around sharing data with chat gpt we're, we're working on it with a with an internal version of chat gpt working at vanderbilt uh currently uh but we're also taking a slow walk on this because uh chat gpt uh hallucinates so we want to make sure that uh that we put things in place if we're going to put them in place that um uh, People, people have an easy way to do the right thing and it's hard to hard to make a mistake. And so we wanna take our time with this, but I do think that there's a lot that can be gained by, um, by, by thinking about using some of these new large language model tools within the platform. And with that, uh, I'll, I'll um, uh, conclude, but, but again, wanna thank you all for, uh, for what you do for the REDCap Consortium. Wanna thank you, um, especially the organizers for this particular uh, Red Cap Con event. And, uh, and again, I'm on to express that I'm honored and, and very pleased to present with you today. Thank you.